video, we are going to cover the open source security platform that is also known as Waza or Wazoo. Not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, this solution is something that I've been playing with over the last couple of weeks, and I think it is simply amazing, especially considered that it is open source and there's a lot of documentation that is provided by the developers of this um, product that we can use to perform a lot of things that is listed here. Uh, for instance, configuration assessment, malware detection, file integrity monitor monitoring, threat hunting, log analysis, and so on and so forth. It even goes to the point as it's providing an active response within the incident response domain, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of things that we are going to be covering in this series. We are going to start off with a simple install and uh, installing the agents on a Linux and a Windows machine. And then from that point forward, we are going to go into several, several labs that will cover these different topics that you could use in order to understand this platform and use this experience either here within this platform or other pl platforms that are used out in the uh, cyber security domain today. Uh, so with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is definitely take a look at the documentation. Um, aside from the proof of concept guide, you are going to want to go to the installation guide and in here has all of the information that you need readily available to install this on a, um, on the server. So there's different things that we could do. We first want to start off with the, uh, installing these components, which is the server, the indexer and the dashboard, all of which are important um or necessary in order to complete these labs uh, so i believe if we go into here we get a better understanding of the hardware that is required the minimum um the different operating systems and then below that we have the actual steps necessary to complete the installation process and for this which i found uh awesome is we are just going to run the installation assistant and we're going to use the dash a option which will pretty much do everything for us so within a matter of minutes we will be able to um, be within the dashboard and start uh, installing our agents on our linux and windows machines and get everything ready to go for the lab so as i mentioned this is the command that we're going to use so we are going to curl this package here uh, the S option is used for silent and the O option is used to pretty much download this file and name it as such. And then we are also going to pretty much perform another function within this single line. And we are going to using bash and pseudo permissions. We are going to execute the installation file that we had just downloaded. And then um, we're going to tack on the dash A option, which using the assistant will install all the various components that I had talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and do that now. So just go ahead and copy this. I'm already uh, into this machine that I have hosted on my ESXi server. Um, so this is just in a an Ubuntu server that meets all the requirements that I had highlighted in the introduction. Uh, so from this point, we are just going to copy and paste this command, like I said, and we are going to just let it execute. Actually, before doing so, Let's go ahead and clear out the downloads folders and then we're going to CD into that directory. Actually, I don't even know if there is a. That's funny. Um, so just do make the directory downloads. And then in here we will run that command. So it just downloads it to this directory and then we can execute it from this directory. Enter the sudo password. Make sure you enter it correctly. It took seven times. Uh, and then as this is running, we will just let it run in the background. And once this has been completed, I will uh, come back and we'll continue this tutorial. All right, so about 10 minutes later, the installation has been completed. Uh, the next thing that you are going to want to do is make sure you grab the user, which is admin, and then this password, which is generated after each installation. Um, there is some documentation that you could find on, I believe, on their website. I have found it in the past and I have it stored in my notes somewhere. But if you ever forget to take note of this, 
because I spun this up several times playing around with different things. Um, but if you ever do lose this, there is a way to regenerate it using a tool that comes with this installation. Um, but that's for another day. So with that being said, the next thing that we are going to want to do is head over to this link here. So we have to replace this with the server IP. Uh, and we could obviously find that by using ifconfig if we have net tools installed. Uh, and for this one, it's going to be 192.168.1.103. So if we just head over to that, and it's going to be on port 443. It might still be spinning up. Let's go ahead and just double check the... Uh, was it manager? Oh, it's missing. So it looks like it is running. So let's just give it a few more minutes and see if this uh, is populated. So just give it a few more minutes and we'll be back. It probably would have helped if I was trying to access it 443 or HTTPS instead it was using uh, HTTP. And that is why we were not able to access the web UI. So after we do that, HTTPS.192.168.103, we will get to the login and we will use admin and then we will specify the, and we will specify the password that we were given during the installation process. We will copy that and we will paste. And there you go. So within a matter of minutes, we now have this solution installed just by using the installation assistant. And at this point, we want to make sure that we get some agents installed on our machines. And in this lab, we will use a Linux and then also a Windows machine and to install these agents. And that will be the way that it reports back to the server and then the logs will be sent to the indexer and so on and so forth. So easy enough, you're going to go to add an agent. Oh, sorry, uh, deploy new agent. And then in there, depending on the operating system that we are going to be working with is uh, specified here. So first we'll start with Windows. And here you, you are going to enter the address of the server, which is 192.168.1.103 as we discussed earlier. Here we'll just say Windows. This is just an agent name. So when we're in the window, we could be easily be able to identify what agent we are looking at and working with. Um, for now, we are just going to use the default group, which is the only one that we have created, because this is also used for later on when we want to go ahead and send out configuration files to different machines. So let's say we had about 20 machines and half of those machines that needed different rules or different um, configuration files applied to those machines, we could go ahead and create different groups and, and then use it that way. Uh, but easy enough, once you have filled out that information and you selected what uh, operating system that you are going to be installing this agent on, down at the bottom, you will see that you have a command that is generated for you. And all you simply got to do is just open up uh, in Windows, open up PowerShell, because it's going to be using the invoke web request uh, commandlet. And then you're just going to copy this and paste it in there. Within a few minutes, this will execute and that will complete. And then you want to make sure that you go ahead and start that service. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so why PowerShell is loading up and there it goes. So this is the virtual machine for Windows that I had set up on my ESXi server and we are going to install that agent on this machine. Uh, so what I like I said, we have to get this command over there. I do not have VM tools or VMware tools installed in this so I cannot copy and paste. So one quick thing that I do, as I did in other videos, is I just create a temporary file on my host machine and then transfer that over using Python, which I'll show you real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do is just set up a temporary text file within this directory on my host machine that I can copy and paste that command into. So we'll just do notepad. Let's go ahead and paste that command. And then we will save that into that directory.
All right, so what we are actually going to do is install that file with a .ps1 extension. So pretty much allowing us to execute this file as a PowerShell script once we get it on our virtual machine with an ESXi. So go ahead and save that. It already exists. Uh, and then go ahead and X out of that. So from this point to get this file onto our virtual machine, we're going to just host a Python web server. So Python 3. So we got Python 3-M for module and then HTTP.server, which is the module that we are specifying and then followed by the port number. So now if we visit this machine's IP address with port 8000, we will be able to download this. So if we go on to our virtual machine, head over to our downloads directory, and we go ahead and use wget, we're gonna specify the IP address, which is 192.168.1.106. And then we're going to specify the port, which is 8000, then the file. And then we are going to use dash O or out file, and then we'll name it. So now if we do directory and we list out the contents of this directory, we will see that the file is now on our virtual machine and we could get contents of that directory or that file to see if it is correct. And that is exactly what we wanted. So now once we have this on this local machine, all we want to do is run that script. Let's go ahead and open up an administrative PowerShell session in order to execute this because the commands that are within that script do require elevated permissions. All right, so within a minute, that will complete. Uh, and then if you go back to the installation or the agent installation process, we will see on step five, we need to start that service. So we could easily do that just by typing, typing it in. It has already been started. Uh, sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. Or if you already had an agent installed, which I may have already installed within a previous lab that I was working on. Uh, but as you can see, it has already been started. So if we head up back over to our dashboard and we go to home, we should see under disconnected or pending, we should see one is because it probably is not active at this time. Actually, it already is active and it looks like we had two that popped up, which is probably for my Ubuntu machine that I was working with earlier. And I will go ahead and remove that and we will cover that process next. But as you can see, we are currently getting in our logs and information from our virtual machine. So if we go here and look at the IP address, we could verify that this is the IP address that is being pulled by this agent here. Uh, and that's pretty much it as far as installing our agent on our Windows 10 machine. All right, so to do this on a Linux machine, depending on the architecture or operating system that is installed, uh, for instance, on this one, we have a Debian and it is a AMD64. So we're going to select that here. And again, we will specify the IP address of the server. Uh, actually, you could leave this blank or you could specify it here. So maybe Ubuntu prod or something, whatever you want to put there. Again, it's only for you to view within the agent window to help you identify which agent you are working with. We are going to leave the default group and, um, and that's it. So pretty much all you're going to do from this point is you are going to go over to the Linux machine. I don't think I need to highlight it. It's going to be the same thing as if you would do on a windows machine, but instead of using PowerShell, you were going to use the terminal. You were going to copy this command here and paste it in. And then you were just going to, um, do the same thing we did on Windows with the service, but instead you're going to reload and then enable and then start the agent. And then that's going to go ahead and uh, allow that agent to communicate with the server. And that's it. So once you go back to the dashboard, as I just highlighted, if we go back to active agents, you should see now see two agents, one for your Linux, which was Ubuntu and one for your Windows. Um, and that's pretty much going to cover the process for today.
So today we installed the entire Waza or Wazoo dashboard manager indexer and everything in between just using the installation agent specifying the dash a option. And then from that point, we went ahead and installed an agent on our window windows lab machine and an Ubuntu lab machine. And this will allow us to collect information such as logs, events, um, even software information. And that is going to be used in the labs going forward. We are going to dive pretty deep into this uh, going forward, covering a few different labs associated with this platform. So definitely be on the lookout for that if you enjoy this type of content. It is definitely worth learning whether you are on the blue team or the red team because knowing this will help you either defend or even attack. Understanding every aspect is definitely worth your time, spending your time learning all of it. Uh, so with that being said, that's going to close out today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, subscribe for more, and as always, never stop learning.